the upper back is not the limiting factor during a front squat, your weak legs are. What's up guys, Alec on Kiri here, and I've been talking about front squats a lot lately because they're awesome and I love them, but every time I talk about them, I inevitably have to hear a whole lot of coping about how I can't work my legs hard during a front squat because the upper back is the primary limiting factor. Cope harder, bro. Today, I'm gonna give you guys something to think about because the upper back is not the true limiting factor here. The legs are. But before I give you guys my theory as to why this is, please remember to smash the like button so we can get some of them sweet algo gains. And if you're new to the channel and you enjoy the content here, make sure to pound that subscribe button as well. Pound it. And <laughs> be sure to check out on CurieLeakFitness.com for details regarding my online coaching and some kick-ass training programs. So it ain't the upper back, guys. And here's a simple way to test this theory for yourself. Go to a squat rack, set the pins up really high so that you only have to move the bar just a few inches to unrack it. Now set up in your front squat position. Brace hard, unrack the bar, and then just hold it for 30 seconds. Maintain good posture and breathe in and out in a rhythmic fashion. Start with roughly 60% of your front squat one rep max. Then try 75%, then try 90%, then try 100%. If you could do 100%, 30 seconds, good posture, try 110%. If you could do 110, try 120, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and so on and so forth until you can't hold the bar safely or securely or in a stable fashion any longer. Now, if you can hold your 1RM on the front squat in a stable, isometric front rack position for 30 seconds or longer, which a lot of you should be able to do, and if you can't, you got other issues that you need to address, but if you can do that, then guess what? Your upper back is not the limiting factor in how much weight that you can front squat. Chances are that your legs are, right? You start upright at the top of the front squat. You can support that weight very easily. You've done it now for at least 30 seconds with your one rep max. <laughs> You squat down, and what happens is you likely start to lose positioning on the way up, most likely in the form of your hips wanting to pop up and run away from the shoulder. So now this places the torso, what was once upright, into a forward leaning position. Even if it is just a slight bit of forward lean, just a slight change in the torso angle, that now greatly amplifies the amount of stress that's going to be placed on the upper back. So now, suddenly, the thoracic region has to create 20% or 50% or 100%. Who the hell knows? It has to create more force than it was before just to be able to maintain the rigidity that it already had. But its subsequent failure at this stage is not due to it being the weak point. Its subsequent failure is due to the loss of positioning that occurred first. And the loss of positioning was due to your weak ass legs not being able to keep your torso upright driving out of the hole. Ergo, the legs are the limiting factor here, not the upper back. So y'all can stop bitching now about how front squats aren't an effective leg builder. You suck at them. They are an effective leg builder. You just have weak legs. Get stronger legs and stop bitching. Now, am I saying that this point is going to hold true for everybody? No, of course not. I never am. There are always going to be people who have a build that is not, that is so not conducive to squatting that their positioning is basically always going to suck no matter what. And the front squat will actually be limited by the upper back here and is not going to be as effective of a leg builder as it could be for these people. But these people are lesser than the world wants to have you believe, right? Now, there are also going to be people who do truly have a weakness of the upper back. It might even be a lot of you right now. And I will say I kind of used to be one of those people. But the thing is, this weakness is actually easily rectified, right? And so rather than running away from it forever, why not just fix it instead, especially when the solution is quite simple? 
And again, where the front squat is concerned and that thoracic extensor strength specifically, a simple, the simplest way to do this is to just end your lower body days maybe once or twice per week with a few sets of those ISO holds that I talked about earlier in the video where you're just holding and bracing in that front rack position. Now, if you have access to a yoke, this is even better. You could do front rack carries. Those are a hell of a lot of fun, but they're not very safe to do with a barbell for multiple reasons. You might have to drop the bar. There's no safe way to do it. If you're walking away from the rack, uh, you can also be potentially choking yourself out during a front squat. So if you start to get faint, but you have 500 pounds on your shoulders and you got nowhere to put the bar, that's a, a bit of a pickle, right? So I would not recommend doing front rack carries unless you actually have some a safe way to do them. And the safest way to do them would be to use a yoke. But in terms of the ISO holds, the simplest way to do them is just start up by loading something challenging onto the bar and perform three to five sets there, holding it for 30 to 60 seconds at a time. Breathe in and out rhythmically. Don't try to hold your breath. Uh, brace hard and focus on maintaining good posture. Don't lean back and take the stress off of the upper back, off of the core, and instead put it on the lower back. If your upper back is truly the limiting factor in your front squats and you do these ISO holds consistently, then it won't be the limiting factor, not the true limiting factor for very long because you will actually develop a truly strong front rack position by doing this isometric hold movement. Personally, I have front squatted 455 pounds, most I've ever done, but I have held over 600 pounds in that ISO front rack position for something like 45 seconds, it might have been a minute, I don't remember, something like that. Uh, so that's over 130% of my best ever front squat held for a period of time in an ISO hold that was much, much longer than it takes to execute even a five rep set of front squats. So obviously my upper back, my ability to support the weight is not the limiting factor in my ability to front squat heavy weights. Now, do I still round over up top sometimes during a challenging set of front squats? Yes, of course I do. Pretty much everybody does. But I don't blame the upper back. I blame the legs for being too weak to drive me properly out of the hole. People want to think, oh, I can back squat so much more than I can front squat. That means that the front squats are not adequately hitting my legs, but that's not the case. The case is that during the back squat, you're most likely just popping your hips up, but you can get away with that during the back squat. You can't get away with it during the front squat. It forces you to keep the stress, the load, the tension on the legs, which if you're squatting for leg development, makes sense as something you might want to be doing, right? It's kind of, it's like how most people have a, a lockout weakness on the deadlift, right? People think they, they are, their glutes are weak or they can't extend their hips or whatever the hell it is. These people don't actually have a lockout weakness. Rather, they have an inability to maintain good position off of the floor when they're starting the pull. And that creates a cascade of events up the chain that results in an inability to lock the bar out at the culmination of the lift. It's really the same thing with the front squat. The loss of position at the early portion of the lift accumulates as you move up the chain and ultimately results in a failure at the mid portion or towards the end of the lift. And then the blame game starts getting misassigned because it creates the appearance of a false weak point. And look, if you don't want to front squat because you don't want to front squat, then don't front squat. I don't give a shit. What I do care about is people saying that it is a poor leg builder when it's not a poor leg builder just because they suck at it and they want to cope about how they suck at it. Either fix the issue by putting your ego aside, starting off light and building your way up slowly and then maybe consider incorporating these ISO holds as well or just stop talking about things you don't really understand. Now the golden ratio to shoot for is squatting, front squatting, 80% of your high bar back squat. If you can do that, then you are a damn good front squatter and leg strength is probably not a true issue or weakness for you. Now, I have personally taken lots of guys who were self-proclaimed front squat haters and actually turned them into front squat lovers. I even have a question on my intake questionnaire for clients that has the name 
any exercises that they want me to exclude, specifically exclude from their programming. And you're probably not going to be surprised to hear that a decent number of guys put front squats on that list. And I abide by that for a little while, but then after a little bit of time passes, I can usually convince people to at least give front squats an earnest go when I believe that these people will benefit from that particular exercise. And after a few months, we've built up a respectable front squat and suddenly these guys who hated front squats, who sucked at front squats, don't have a problem with them any longer. So, you know, just some food for thought for you guys today. You probably haven't heard this perspective before, so it's always good to be exposed to new concepts like this. Now, if you do take the info in this video here to heart, it really just might help you get to the next level in your training. Anyway, that's all I got for today, guys. I hope you found this one informative, and I hope that it made you analyze this awesome exercise from a little bit of a different perspective. Please remember to smash the like button before you go. Leave me some love in the comments down below. Check out onkyourleafitness.com for online coaching and training programs. And as always, keep training hard. I will catch you guys next time.